So you have eight minutes to talk about The Exorcist Believer starting now. One of the problems with all the Exorcist spin-offs, with the exception of Exorcist 3, which was by William Peter Blatty, is that they have completely misunderstood the original. So the message of the original, amongst the many messages, it's not about the girl, it's about everybody else in the house, it's about the priest. Also, message of the original, you don't tell the audience what the message of the original is, they have to feel it. That's kind of essential to the thing. So, Exorcist 2, worst movie ever made. It is all about the girl. Let's get, let's spit a leopard and get on the back of a locust and fly to Africa. Exorcist Dominion, the most boring movie ever made, featuring a lengthy sequence in which someone sits down and explains the plot of the entire movie, which was so boring that after Morgan Freeman made it, after Morgan Creek, Morgan Freeman made it, they dropped the whole movie and decided to start again with a different director and then made Exorcist The Beginning, which is the stupidest movie ever made, which climaxes in an all-singing, all-dancing, all-spider-walking sequence, literally featuring hits on 45-style vocal samples from the original Exorcist while somebody crawls around the inside of a cave and shouts things. Wow. Now we have this, uh, The Exorcist Believer from David Gordon Green, which, you know, it... It would like us to see it as a requel, you know, a reboot pre uh, sequel to The Exorcist from the makers of the Halloween series. If you remember, we we, we liked the, the new Halloween and then no, that we was, didn't. And then we didn't. This is, in fact, better seen as a requel from the director of Pineapple Express and Your Highness, although I should say it is less funny and indeed less scary than either of those movies. It is not good. The story is this. Following an earthquake in Port-au-Prince, Victor, played by Leslie Odom Jr., has to decide between saving his wife and his baby. Thirteen years later, he lives with his daughter Angela. She misses her mum, and one evening she sneaks off into the woods with her friend Catherine. They have candles, they have a picture of the mum, they have a medallion, and they do a seance type thing. They then disappear for three days. When they turn up, they're found in a barn, but they don't remember anything. They seem to be okay. But then they start behaving weirdly, particularly in church. In, in church, there's a small girl, there's a small girl, girl walking down the aisle, yeah. and she's got it's lots the of trailer, basically. Blood it's wine. And, so, oh, is it wine? Yeah. So, Catherine's mom is a Christian and believes in possession. Anne Dowd is a medic with a not so secret past, who um, about which. Uh, Angela, the other girl, knows in the same way that Reagan knew about Father Karras' mother. Ooh. She gives Victor a book, which is a book written by Chris McNeil, right? The mother of Reagan McNeil, called A Mother's Explanation, which is an account of her daughter's possession. Well, first point, Chris McNeil would not have written a book about her mother's possession. One of the key things about the first film is that they are trying to keep everything secret and as in the source case, the 1949 Mount Rainier case, they don't want any publicity. Oh, anyway, turns out that as a result of writing the book, Reagan has gone into hiding and no longer speaks to her mother. Well, there's a shock. In the book, Victor reads a thing which says that on the body of Reagan during this possession appeared the words, uh, help me. Note to writers, in the original film, it is explicitly made clear that Chris does not know that that writing appears on her daughter's body because Sharon actually says to Karis, I didn't want Chris to see this. Also, note to writers, turning Ellen Burstyn into a Basil exposition character who just gets to read huge screeds of explanatory dialogue is not the best use of Ellen Burstyn. Originally, the, you know, the original specifically avoided any explanation. This explains everything for the hard of thinking. Even worse, Chris, who has seen two priests die while trying to perform an exorcism in the first film now is brought out of retirement and seriously love Ellen Burstyn and I hope that she has done wonderful things with the money they paid her for doing this. Turns up and decides to have a go and the result is one of the film's touchstone stupid scenes in which the most notoriously shocking scene from the original Exorcist is turned into a stabby Punch and Judy pantomime which at least means that Bur Burstyn won't have to witness anything further and gets to ha have a bit of a lie down. Everything then goes completely formulaic, heads get turned, vomit gets spewed, bodies get levitated. We move towards an Avengers Assemble finale in which everyone decides to have a go. At one point, Anne Dowd actually says, I live in the name of Jesus. I'll give it everything I've got. And everyone goes, that sounds like a good idea. Elsewhere, somebody else declares, this is putrid, which I have to say, I did laugh at that. And then somebody else explains, it's vapor from inside them. They're at a critical temperature. It's the start of an eruption. So the girls have now turned into boiling kettles. Despite the 
absolute stupidity of it all, it is staggeringly dull. It's hard not to compare it to the original because every other shot is a direct shot quote from the original. So, opens with dogs fighting. Oh yeah, like the dogs in Iraq. Angela stealing bacon from her father's plate. Oh, it's like Reagan stealing the cookies from the jar. Victor telling Angela, oh, you're very mature. Oh, like Chris McNeil told Reagan, you look so mature. The scene in the boxing club when he's hitting the punch bag, like Damien Carris. The eerie lights going on and off in the house, like in the McNeil house. A shot of a light in the window, like the poster from the original. The medical examination, in which is horrible, and the, the doctors say you're going to feel something cold and there'll be a bit of pressure, which, which is the same. The injection with the sedative, the demonic flash face, although this time the demonic flash face actually looks like the Marilyn Manson character from The Nun. Catherine wearing a blue dress like some kind of Reagan cosplay at a Halloween party. The terrible sub Mercedes McCambridge demon voice. I mean, at least Colleen Dewhurst did a better job of it in Exorcist 3. Warner's, when the original came out, sued the makers of um, Abbey, which got pulled from studios, which was a kind of like black exploitation film, which they said was ripped off of The Exorcist. They also sued the makers of Behind the Door, which was a US Italian co production, which they said was a rip off of The Exorcist. Both of those movies are more accomplished than The Exorcist Believer. Roger Ebert reviewing Beyond the Door said, it's all trash, but it's scary trash. This is just trash. It is not scary at all. On the subject of which, there's a there's a Turkish exorcist called Satan, which I think actually fundamentally understands the original movie better than this does. And when I was in that chip shop near you, which is run by a Turkish family, the guy pr- the told me it's not pronounced Satan, it's pronounced Shaitan. And I said, okay. well, never was something you know more correctly done. It is apparently the beginning of a trilogy, after which is that we a trilogy. Ha- yes, it's the Elvis trilogy. After which we have Exorcist Deceiver, presumably followed in the third case by Exorcist A Sleeper. It is a movie made by people who have seen the original but have not seen the original. They've watched it but they haven't understood it. They have quoted it without ever taking on board any of what it meant. The film has nothing to do with The Exorcist other than its original title and the I have to say, I mean as I said Burstyn, I'm, you know, I really really hope that Burstyn takes the money that she got from this and gets something wonderful out of it. It is okay, fine. That's the end of that. It is dumb, dumb, boring just it's as bad as it could have been and then some and it's so dull what's the best bit about it it ends if you want a sequel to the exorcist go and look at the reconstructed legion which is on the blu-ray of exorcist 3 as for exorcist the believer it starts out as exorcist 2 the heretic which william Friedkin famously called the hairy tick and said was the product of a demented mind then it goes a bit empty event horizon as they all go to hell and then bring something back then it turns into utterly silly sophie's choice for reasons which totally fail me before finally becoming even more rubbish repossessed thanks very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.